Hi, uh, today we're going to build a 3D model of a squid. My name is Russ Higley. I'm a marine biologist and the director of Highland College's Math Center down in Redondo. And I use these models with my marine biology classes in college because they're a really good way to look at the anatomy of a squid without having the mess of a squid. Uh, and so obviously this one's built and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to build one. Before we begin, if you haven't done this already, make sure you've cut out all of the pieces. You can see some of them scattered here around. To be honest, the cutting out is probably the most, you know, fiddly bits sort of thing with this project. Uh, it's what's gonna take you, you know, half hour to an hour to do, to do that task. Um, in terms of assembling, what I like is either what are called glue dots, or which work on some of the bigger parts or a glue stick. And then what I like to use is some kind of piece of paper or something because I'm gonna be doing glue stick and I'm gonna get some on the surface. Therefore, it's not on my desk that I then have to clean off. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've already started and actually you'll, you'll notice a couple, I had to undo some of this. So um, we had a, a, a technical challenge before. So you may notice it's a little bit um, faded. So the first one actually tells you to take the dorsal mantle and the interior mantle. What does that mean? So the, the dorsal surface is the back. If you think of a dorsal fin on a shark, okay? So the dorsal surface is the top surface of the main body of a squid. In other words, this part right here. And you're gonna attach the outside and the inside together. And I've already done that on this one. So I've just glued these two pieces together. Okay, so that's that's step number one. So go ahead and do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the fins. Okay, so we're gonna end up looking like these. And so the fins are, squid have two forms of locomotion. One is with these fins. The other is with the siphon that we'll see here in a little bit. So what these are is they've been, they're folded and they're folded colors towards the color side instead of the white side. And what's gonna happen is that one says, F, they both say SF1 and SF1 is gonna attach to SF and it's gonna fold away, okay? And then the other one, and they can only, you know, symmetrically, they only will fit one way. They're gonna fold like that. And then we're gonna glue this on top so that this, becomes a piece. Um, you could also potentially glue it to this first and then go down. I don't know that it really matters which process. So let's go ahead and do that. So now this glue stick is kind of nice because it starts as purple and it, when it dries, it, zoom, zoom, zoom. When it dries, the purple turns clear. So um, I know I, when I first did this, I wanted to put it on the wrong side of these two. So this is the, the fold is towards the middle. And if you haven't used glue sticks much, kind of, you know, if you hold it there for five, 10 seconds, um, it usually sticks pretty well, otherwise it may pop off. So that again with this one. All right. So there you can see we've done the two sides. Okay. And then we're going to attach the, the surface, the, the dorsal surface of the fins. What I've done is I've folded it to make it fit this wedge pattern. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, so you can see it fits pretty nicely there. So we're gonna glue it down. And then, Do 
All right. So there is the dorsal surface of the mantle with the fins attached. Okay. All right. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to attach the ventral surface of the mantle. So the mantle is the main body. It's a, it's a tube in shape. It's basically, it's long and torpedo. If we compare it with an octopus, um, this is the same body part right here, but you can see this one's not torpedo shape. Octopus are basically, they kind of sit still. They don't, they don't necessarily, I mean, they can move and they can jet through the water. Whereas these ones are actively moving and jetting through the water. Kind of that's, that's they, they, they pretty much don't sit on the bottom where the octopus is primarily going to sit on the bottom most of its life. And so octopus don't have these. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to attach the other surface. And so if you cut these out, you probably, this is probably still attached together. So if you haven't cut these apart, do so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold the tab M1. We're going to fold it under and we're going to attach it to M. And we do that on both sides. Now, one thing to note, when you fold these together, depending on how exactly you folded it and how exactly you glued it, you don't want these to be like overlapping at an angle. You don't want, you want them to imagine them to be two doors and you want them to shut reasonably snug or reasonably clean without too much overlap, right? And that takes a little bit of, of, you know, maybe a little bit of practice, a little bit of maneuvering with the glue while it's still wet. So M1 to M. M1 to M. And then once I think I'm pretty close, then I'm gonna I'm gonna shut it and now I'm gonna kind of maneuver them a little bit to try to get like I can see them too too tight up on the top. There we go. So now you know it looks like a, a unified piece. And there is my door to open up the mantle so we can see inside. Zoom in on that. Notice I can't see the number of the letters anymore, the M and M1. So this is our mantle. And if you've ever eaten squid, you've most likely the rings. If I cut this and I go chop, 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 throw it in my fryer, this is the rings of the squid that you would eat. The mantle is what you eat. Okay. All right. Um, next, we're going to attach the pen. Now the pen is the, um, it's basically rigidity. And so squid do not have a skeleton like us. Um, they don't have a shell like their cousins, clams and oysters and so forth. And octopus actually have no shell. They've, so octopus, squid and octopus have highly reduced their shells to the extent that octopus have actually gotten rid of their shells. Squid still have this now internal most of, most of their cousins have an external shell. And this pen is, it almost, imagine like a, a thin plastic feather, if you will, is what it, if, if you ever have a chance to, it's not plastic, it's a protein. But, it, you know, when you first hold it up, you're like, it, feel, it seems like plastic. Um, and so this actually attaches tightly to the inside of the mantle. When we do it here, we're going to attach A1 to A, and we're going to glue it so that it hinges so we can see underneath. For example, like 36, these are neurons. And so the, the um, squid are actually some of the largest neurons of any animal out there, um, much bigger than human neurons. So I'm going to glue the back of A1, so on the non-color side. And we're going to glue this on. All right. So there's A1. It can flip up. Again, in, in a real animal, this would be glued tight, not glued. Um, it would be attached tightly um, in there. But for this, this lets us see what's underneath. So that's why we've, we've hinged it. OK. Um, we are then going to attach the 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 muscles, the funnel retractor muscles, and those are F1. 
Okay. And actually I ended up with an odd number because of another project. And so what these are going to do is they're going to control the siphon. And so I'll show you when we get to that, we'll see that later. So they're going to attach there. They're also going to be hinged. So you're going to leave the F1 covered. And so you're going to, you're going to glue the back of this F1 to F. Glue the back. F1 to F. All right. So those are those are actually muscles. Okay. Um, all right. The next thing we're going to attach is a digestive system. And the digestive system is similar to ours, and it's got an intestine and it's got a stomach, and it's it's pretty complex system. And so we're going to attach A2 to A1 with the A2 facing up. Okay. All right, there we go. Now, now we have to decide if we want to have a male or a female. And in your stuff, you have two yellow structures labeled zero, one. And, um, and the larger one are the females, the smaller is the male. So whichever sex you would like your uh, squid to be. Let's do female. And this is a little bit weird. So we're gluing at the center of the digestive is an O. And so, but that's right, that's on a, on a piece that you just glued in. So it's not really, it seems like it's loose and it is. And you're gonna glue the back of O1 to O. And what I've done is I kind of folded it to help make it easier on where I'm gonna glue it to. So just kind of a square. And then I'm gonna put my finger underneath and I'm gonna hold this. And I want the line being the length of the mantle. So, you know, I'm, I'm going this way with this. So you can see all my stuff is kind of nicely centered inside. But what this still does let me do is pull out so I can look at the different layers from inside. So, um, The next thing we're going to attach is the um, is the gills and the hearts. There's basically the circulatory and respiratory system. So what we have here is two gills. Um, and if you dissect a squid, you'll actually see these pretty easily. They're, they're kind of, especially if they're wet, they look feathery. And each of these attaches to a heart. So squid have three hearts, just like octopus. This heart pumps this gill. So basically pumps blood through the gill for the exchange of oxygen. This heart pumps this gill, same thing. And then there's what's called a systemic heart. And the systemic heart pumps the blood through the rest of the organism. So instead of like humans, we have one big heart that does everything. Um, they have three smaller hearts. And there's advantages and disadvantages in that, just like all choices. And so we're going to attach that O2 there onto O1 of the gonads. And so you can see my sandwich here is getting lots of different layers. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the tentacles, OK? And the arms. So in your stuff, so this is probably most of what's left. You have um, two um, basically heads and arms. One's labeled V for ventral, so the, the belly, D for dorsal, so the back. And then you have just some arms that's labeled V and just some arms labeled D. Otherwise, they look pretty much identical with the difference being the position of the eye. So if you can see their eyes are slightly more top mounted than bottom mounted. 
on this. So if we finish this animal, right, the eyes are more looking up than looking down, but they're still on the side enough that they can they can see pretty pretty much all around. And so, and then the other part of this are the actual tentacles. So what's the difference? So arms have, let me use this one, arms, there are eight arms, and the arms have suckers that go all the way the length of the arms, okay? Tentacles are comparatively longer and only have suckers out at the end. And so the way I think of it is, is the tentacles are more for, they'll actually, they'll kind of pull them in and then they'll shoot them out and grab their prey with their two arms, they'll get a hold of it and then they'll pull it in and then with their arms, they'll control it. So, um, and that way they can help. Remember that the prey they're eating may actually be as big or bigger than them and can cause injury. So, um, so the first thing you're going to do is you have the two tentacles and they're both labeled T1 and you're going to glue them together. So I've already done that here. So just, you know, glue them entirely together. So you get, you know, tentacles on both sides. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take what's called the buccal mass. And there are two of them. And one says D for dorsal and one says V for ventral, but otherwise they're the same. And we're going to glue the tentacles inside and it says insert tentacles and so what what that means is we're going to put it underneath and we're going to make a buccal mass sandwich with the tentacles inside so now what's a buccal mass well it's 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 basically it's the mouth plus it's also um the buccal mass is actually this part but we've got the intestine and 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 the esophagus and, and other parts of the digestive system so what we're going to do is we're going to glue T1, because remember I've already glued my tentacles together, and we're going to glue it, lining it up with that insert tentacles here. And I'm going to flip it over, and we're going to now, this time, we're going to paint both T1 and the rest, because we're going to make our glued together sandwich. All right, a couple more steps and we are done. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the dorsal um, arms and head and we're gonna glue them together. All right. So this is especially what you're doing the arms and tentacles where you can potentially make a lot of mess on your work surface. All right, I know I did the same with the V2, V1. And obviously you want to try to line them up as neatly as you can so that you don't see any of the surface inside, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue V1 and V2 together. And we flip it over and we're gonna glue D1 and D2 together. Notice I'm painting or I'm gluing the D1 and I'm putting the D2 on top of it. So then our our final step so is we, one of the things you have to remember is is this the to close this up is this the ventral side or the dorsal side if you remember we started out that this was the dorsal surface so right now it's laying on its back if you will and so we're going to attach to A2. And so if you kind of think about it, should I attach the dorsal surface or should I attach the ventral surface? So if it's laying on the back, the dorsal is going to be down in this position. And so we're going to glue D2 to A2. And this time we're going to literally glue the D2 front face 
to the A2. That there for a moment, just because this one's a pretty, it's a small hold for a lot of stuff going on. And the final step on this is the siphon. So this siphon we've talked about it a couple times. And so these animals are jet propelled with water. So imagine, and then blowing out with your mouth. Well, except they don't, they're not using their mouth, they're using their mantle as their balloon, so to speak, and they're blowing the water out through their siphon. And so they can turn the siphon with those muscles that we attached. And so the muscles, one is attached here and one is attached here. And so it can turn the siphon and it can change its speed. So these animals move fastest. And to be honest, a lot of the time, most of their long distance motion is this. Their fins are more of a steering, they can hold them in place. Um, and so it kind of depends what kind of motion we're talking about. And so this one, we're gonna fold F2 and F2 under, and we're gonna glue it to F1. Try not to get any of the like the gills and stuff. Uh, hold that for a moment because it's it's kind of curved over. There's a lot that you went over with with the head parts, and so we have a squid model. Very cool. These models, by the way, are done by a company called Getting Nerdy. Uh, and they have a whole bunch of other animals. So shout out to their um, scientific accuracy with these and the ability to have these cool dissections. I've done these again with my college students um, as well as with younger as well. So lots and lots of fun for your squid. And now you have a squid that you can leave on the shelf and keep forever and it won't smell. Thanks much. Hope you enjoy Squidorama. <laughs>